The similar thing about a camel, most of you must have heard this hadith. So one time, uh, Rasulullah was traveling. <coughs> uh, he had a mule, if you know. We discussed this last time. He had a mule and he was going on, on that journey. And he had with him Abdullah ibn Jafar. And you know who that he was, right? He was the son of his cousin, Jafir ibn Abu Talib, who we discussed in Battle of Mutar, how he was Shaheed and so on. So he was his son. So they were both traveling. And Rasulullah wanted to uh, answer the call of nature. He wanted to use the bathroom. So now he wanted to. He was looking for a place. So there was an uh, orchard of an Ansari, a, a land full of trees and everything. So he said, you know, this is a place I can relieve myself. So when he entered there, he saw that there was a camel there and this camel when uh, he saw Rasulullah the it started to cry and the tears were just coming out so Rasulullah approached the camel and stroked and on, on the behind the ears and the raised bone and slowly that camel became calm so Rasulullah he asked, who is the owner of this camel? Who is the owner of this camel? So this Ansari, he came out and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I am the owner of this camel. So Rasulullah said that, Will you not fear Allah regarding this, uh, regarding this animal whom Allah has granted you possession of? This camel is complaining to me and it's saying to me that you hurt it and let it work too hard. It's complaining to me. So the story is actually that this Ansari he used to, you know, he had all these lands and these trees. He they would use camels to water these trees. And if you have a lot of uh, a big orchard, you would actually use animals because you cannot do it yourself. So that the camels would help out. And so he was overusing that camel, and to the extent that the camel couldn't take, but he was forcing it and you know being very cruel to it. So Rasulullah was now the miracle here is that he was able to talk and, and the camel knew that this is the person who, whom I can talk to can help me out. The camels knew, animals knew that, the deer knew that and this camel also knew that now I see a person who can understand me. The people couldn't hear the camel but the Rasulullah somehow managed to communicate with the camel. And uh, the Ansari would have got surprised. How does Rasulullah know that I am overusing this camel? Because it's something new, right? So this, so this happened. And a young Ansari he came to realize that he was indeed doing wrong. But the uh, thing here that I really like is Rasulullah He didn't say, "Don't uh, overuse this camel. This is bad." Or something. He used this word, "Fear Allah." Fear Allah, because now it's a very serious thing. You know, the it's not just about good and bad. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala can punish you if you are not being good to animals. Yes, it's true you can eat camels, you can slaughter in an Islamic way, but it doesn't mean that you can torture them and you know kick them or beat them, whatever. It's haram. You cannot do that. And we also mentioned, I think, before the story of the cat, wherein this woman just locked this cat and because of that the cat died and how she was destined to hellfire just because of a cat it doesn't really matter if you are praying qiyamul and five time prayers fasting because of one small animal you can end up in hellfire so it's a serious thing now so these rights were rasulullah this is what islam came about it's not what you see in the media islam is all about bloodthirsty people terrorism going about killing Rasulullah even taught about small animals, how to be merciful to them. This is what Islam is all about.